and that's the <laughs> bloody I, process. I'll tell you where to speak the process, mate. <laughs> you sound like an Arsenal fan. <laughs> And hello, hello, and thank you for joining us here at the Absolute Football Podcast. And I am absolutely a fan, Dabby Dozy. And as you can see, I do not have any of my compadres with me. Unfortunately, they were just all too intimidated by the greatness of my guest I have here today, the pristine, experienced head of Chris from Leicester Till I Die. Chris, thank you for joining us. And how are you today, sir? Well, according to that, I'm a happy chappy, but no, it's, been a, it's been a long time since I've been that. But uh, I've experienced, I mean, you've, you've built me up so much there. And uh, I think there's only one way to go. <laughs> yeah, some people would say experienced. I would probably say old. But uh, no, I'm as, it's football, I'm as well as I can be. Ah, sensational. And this is, of course, our All About series where we talk all about a specific team. And as you can tell, from his background, Chris is a massive Nottingham Forest. He's not. He's not. He's a massive Leicester fan, and he is. He is the. Uh, <laughs> he is the pimp daddy of Leicester podcasting. Of that, I have no doubt. And uh, Chris, so tell everybody a little bit more about you. Obviously, you can confirm you're not a Nottingham Forest fan. Of course not. And uh, so, so, your team. Tell us all about your team and where your love for your team came from. Well, I mean, I want to say thank you very much as an Everton fan for having me on. <laughs> 15 all. Uh, no, no, no. Um, I was born and bred in Leicester. Uh, you tend to sort of don't, you know, support Leicester unless you're sort of from there or your dad supported it. You know, you've never, you've never been a team that you would support. Let's say, for example, I don't know if you came from sort of Wales and you were a Liverpool fan, you know, it would just, yeah, support. just wouldn't happen, would it? <laughs> no, it wouldn't. No, no, you and I've, I'm, I mean, I'm, I've just taken early retirement. I'm early 60s. At, um, I left Leicester when I was 21 and I just sort of only had a few years of getting into football, but I'd grown up around the, you know, the great, you know, uh, Leicester team of the 70s, you know, the Frank Worthington, the Keith Weller, the Alan Birchinals. Uh, amazing team. Never won anything, but it, they, they were just so nice, good to watch. And um, I moved away, and I kind of, it's funny, I kind of got more into it when I moved away. And that's when I started doing a blog. Uh, I was invited on to somebody else's to write regularly for them. Uh, I then said, well, if I'm doing it for you, I might as well do it for myself. So I left and, and set up. Then he came to me about a year later and said, I'm giving it up. Do you want to take over mine as well? And then it was a website. Then it was Facebook. Then it was Twitter. Now it's YouTube. I mean, it's just like the, we are all the same. They become these wild animals that we find very, yeah. very hard to control. Um but I've I've got I've got four children, but the, the eldest one is the one that's really into football. Not that he had much choice. And I remember saying he was actually born in. Well, all my kids were born in Burnley, which is where I was living at the time. Yeah. And I said to him, I said, you know, you either support Leicester because your dad does, or yeah. you support Burnley because that's where you're born and it's your home team and what have you. And he said. Um, he said, well, yeah, see how it goes sort of thing. And I was, I was watching him and <laughs> I remember we played Burnley one day and we scored and I saw him out of the corner of my eye and he went, yes. And I thought, I've got him. <laughs> <He's lost laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, and that's basically where, where, where it's all stemmed from. I mean, the YouTube in, I started, what, four seasons ago now? Um, and it just got going, and of course, then we all had the COVID and everything, and everything yeah. it all blew up, you know, and everybody sort of expanded with that. Um, but it's a way just of, you know, what, what you call like Facebook friends and YouTube friends, yeah. and it's just a way of, and especially during COVID, of stopping, stopping going mad and jumping out the window. Yeah, it is, it's, it's nice communicating with other people of similar interests, isn't it? You, if you if you've got a love of football, you're never gonna, and you meet somebody else who's got a love of football, you'll never not have anything to speak about. I mean, I no. went on a, a a Norwegian coastal cruise. Sounds very posh, doesn't it? And I went right up past the North Arctic Circle, right round to the top of Norway. Then two hours in, we're going to see the Northern Lights. So 
sort of half 11 at night, pitch black, we're at this sort of camp in the middle of nowhere, sort of just white snow and, you know, like a Christmas scene. And I'd forgotten I'd got a scarf sort of hanging off my thing. And this guy comes up behind, he goes, oh, Leicester City. And I'm like, I thought, oh, it must be somebody off the coach. No, it was a bloody goat herd or whatever it is. <laughs> <laughs> top of Norway, and but he knew of us because of obviously the you know the Premier League success and what have you. Yeah. Uh, and then that was it. Then bugger the Northern Lights. We were just talking football, and his local team was a Norwegian team, and uh, I think it was the team that knocked Blackburn out uh, of the Champions League once. But yeah, you just the football. If I mean, I've been on a safari in Africa, and I've ended up speaking to an American who's, again, a Liverpool fan like yourself. It's just Everywhere, it is the language are. of the world, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. I mean, what what, what a life, though. Norwegian cruises, ah. uh, safaris. Yeah, well, yes, it is. But uh, like I say, I'm of an age now where uh, I can do that. <laughs> wow, all, all this extravagance. But yet you still find time to do your podcast. That I mean, the po- how, how is it going? How is it? How is it doing a Leicester podcast in general, and then more specifically at this point in time? Because I'm assuming they're two different things. Well, yes. I mean, I think so. Sort of when I, I, I kind of, and I think a lot of people sort of miss that original surge in doing YouTube yeah. channels. And Leicester, we're not the biggest club in the world. We don't have a huge fan base. So, you know, I, I, I think sort of, You've got you've got the club ones, obviously. Then you've got an, a, another couple of main ones. Uh, I'm only sort of I, I class myself as small. Uh, I, I've grown. I'm, I'm monetizing and what have you, but I'm not huge. But I'm just about having fun. I don't yeah. take anything too seriously. If you want, you know, if you want to hear a show that's mixing football and cheesy dad jokes, then get over to me. You know, and I'll have anybody <laughs> on. Um, Funny thing is, we'll have to start doing a show at the moment because of the way things are going, uh, called Life's a Pitch, which I call it's my it's my soapbox show, as I like to call it. It's when I get on and I I do a Mark Goldrich and I just go mad about things, and yet yeah, that tends to get the most views. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, Everybody oh, likes pain. Off the Eurovision, you know, but, uh, but it's it's better now to talk about because we've got something new to talk about. You know, because yeah. we've got a new manager in, and we finally got rid of that bell end that is Brendan Rogers. Sorry to use the language. <laughs> um, why the hell was he still with us? But that's another that's another question. I'm sure you'll be asking later on. But so it it got to a point where we were we actually weren't even looking forward to doing shows because we were just repeating the same things over and yeah. over again. And, uh, you you mentioned your Eurovision show, obviously. I yes. didn't know Leicester were in the Eurovision. Con- is this a Eurovision song contest? It's the only. It's the only way we're going to get into Europe. This <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. Just because I knew, you know, it's something that um, uh, it's different. You know, it's just something different. Well, you know, you can uh, with the season we've had. It's just. You need something to distract you from that, and uh, and again, you get you know you get meeting, talking to people from all over you know all over Europe and what have you, and of course we're hosting it this year, and uh, this has got some good views. <laughs> so there you are, ladies and gentlemen. If you want to catch anything about Leicester or the Eurovision Song Contest, you know, exactly. Let Leicester till I die is the place to be. It's certainly the Come place on, to be. <laughs> but we're, we're going to try and make this a little bit of like a, 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 a happy sandwich and that we'll, we'll we'll do something nice before we get into the gurge of the season. So obviously mm. you've been a lesser supporter for, for some time um, yeah. from what you've been saying. I'm not going to I'm not going to put a, a, an age limit or anything on it because that's that's just unfair. Um yeah. But that, we are all-time favourite Leicester player. I mean, most people, if they think about Leicester, they go to all the Mr Lineker off the bat. But for um, you, who is who is your all-time Leicester favourite player? Yeah, I went to school with Mr Lineker. I oh. was in the same class as, as Mr Lineker. And I can't stand Mr Lineker, <laughs> if you must be honest. I, I can um, get that. <laughs> yeah, I... I, I Actually defended him. Uh, that was the first live the pitch show I did when he uh, was not doing the match of the day. Yeah, and uh, I actually defended his right to, to free speech. But no, 
Uh, I didn't get on with them at school for various reasons which I don't want to go into, but I just, I don't, yeah, yeah. So, no, he's not, he's not certainly not up there at the top of my uh, favourite players of all time. When, when we won the Premier League, we got a lot of people suddenly following us, which is natural, yeah. you know, because we haven't got a huge sort of round the world following at all. But suddenly, obviously, because of what happened, how it happened, etc., we got a lot of, you know, fans sort of jo- joining us, if you like, you know. And like when we had Riyad Mahrez, we had every yeah. third fan was Algerian. Funnily enough, <laughs> all moved on when, when he went to Man City. <laughs> um, but I, I'm actually, as much as I love the players that were in that, that team and squad, and that they, if I happened to put a team together, there probably would be some in there. Um, I have to go back to the likes of Frank Worthington, yeah, Keith Weller, and we mentioned this when we were chatting before. What Keith Weller could do with the ball, I mean, it's it just he, he scored a goal. It's on YouTube against Luton in the FA Cup. I think it won goal of the season. What he did, how he controlled that ball. It was messy esque, but it, you should have seen the pitch. It was like playing in a mud yeah. bath, and you were still <laughs> able to do it. And it was a how we didn't play more for well, we didn't play more for England because he was playing for Leicester. And Frank Worthington, who was supposed to be going to you guys, and he, uh, uh, I think Bill Shankly pulled out because of a medical. He wasn't too keen on him or his lifestyle as well. Um, but, uh, yeah, the story, of course, about Frank Worthington is that once he joined us, the the, uh, the players' uh, lounge with all the players' wives suddenly got really, really full. <laughs> but uh, he, he he was an amazing player as well. So, And that's what got me into Leicester. That was the period when I started to sort of watch them and take notice of them. I mean, the first game I ever saw was uh, Red Star Belgrade, who yeah. were... Um, obviously, at that point, they're now some of the name that's unpronounceable. Uh, but they were one of the. They were like a Barcelona. They were really, really big, and they'd just come over and beaten Nottingham Forest, who I think were European champions, or, or had just won the European Championship uh, Cup, and we beat them. I don't know how, you know, unbelievable, but we beat them, and I, I was at there at Filbert Street and. Yeah, and that's really, that was my first ever game, and I'd kind of it just dragged me in and won't let me go. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Football, football has a habit of that. Even uh, I mean, yeah. I, I, as I mean, I'll, I'll briefly. I, I started supporting Liverpool when I was five. I wasn't a glory hunter. <laughs> Obviously, I think I was 91, 1991. There was no glory to be had at Liverpool for that period of time, and you and you you just you suffer through it. You know, you suffer. I and, think uh, um, I think we won the Premier League earlier than you did, didn't we? If I remember, did. look, I've got to say I grew up with um, Liverpool being the biggest team in Europe, yeah. and a Bill Shankly and Bob Paisley, yeah. and I had the I had the utmost respect for that Liverpool side because if I remember one season we would come up under Jock Wallace in the eighties and we beat Liverpool twice that season. Uh, we got relegated, mind, but we were the first <laughs> team to do the double overview in however many years and the first team to win at Anfield in like a season and a half or something. And you know what? The manager came out, and I forget, I think it was Bob Payton, and he just came out and said, you know, they were the better team. They deserved it. None of this, yeah. well, do you know what? We should have had that penalty and uh, yeah. I didn't see that or you know, we were wearing the wrong colour shirts. And I always, <laughs> you know, and I always remind Man United fans that because, of course, they had so much success over so many years that before them, Liverpool were the Man United of the day. Yeah. So it's, it, it, football is certainly uh, cyclical. It all goes on in a big cycles. And uh, and I think, to be honest, I think sort of Leicester winning when they won the league, sort of with the start of that break um, <clears throat> where it was always the big teams, it was always the same big teams all the time. And you sort of opened up the first team to have made a difference, really, in a long time. Yeah, I think it, I think it's gone back to that because when we won it, I think we upset a few people. No. Um, they had that stupid Champions Cup or whatever it was that that American guy had set up, and he he didn't want to let us in it. 
because we were Leicester, we weren't one of the big six. And yeah. the FA sort of said, well, if you don't let Leicester in, you're not having any of the teams in sort of thing. So uh, he, he did, uh, he did you know, concede that. But it, it, it was almost after we won it that the team said, well, that's not going to happen again. You know, yeah. and we'd, we'd, it had happened before, you know, which it hurts me to say, it, Nottingham Forest had come up. Yeah. But it was a different game then. You know, it wasn't it wasn't about the money like it is now. And they had yeah. Brian Clough, who obviously we yeah, know genius. was a legend, you know. Uh, and Blackburn did it, but they had Jack Walker's millions, you know, <laughs> yeah. you know. And I think we were the I think because we'd done so bad well, you know, we'd only just stayed up with a couple of games yeah. left. We'd have been, no team I think had been bottom of the Premier League as long and survived as we had done. Yeah. And I think Win, then going on and winning it was what... If we'd gone a couple of seasons where we'd finished mid-table and then won it, it wouldn't have been such a big story. But I, I actually live down in Bournemouth now, and that season, they were the bigger story. Because when I came mm. down to Bournemouth, there was something like minus 17 points docked because they were in administration. Uh, the players were collecting money outside the, the Bournemouth Pavilion to try and keep the club going. And then here they were, 10, 11 years later, in the Premier League. Uh, and to me, that was an amazing story. But you know, it was a weird, it was an unbelievable twelve months. I was going to say, I mean, how, how did you, how did that feel at the time being a less fan? Because obviously, every single week, I mean, it was a Claudio Ranieri, wasn't it? it was uh, yeah. saying we, we, you know, next game, it's the next game. We're not thinking about that. We're not thinking about that. And it was, it was almost like every single match. You think, well, they're going to drop points here. They're going to drop points here. <laughs> And, yeah. and it just didn't happen. I mean, as a, as a fan, I mean that that must have been just incredible. I mean, how, how did it feel that season? Oh, totally and utterly unbelievable. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I was actually at work, sat next to a Tottenham Hotspur fan. Now, <laughs> knowing what Tottenham Hotspur are like, <laughs> unless there's no other team like Leicester for shooting themselves in the foot, neither of us thought our team was going to win it. I don't think I sobered up all season. I mean, it was just absolutely <laughs> unreal. The first, and I was at the first game, and unfortunately, typical. I'd had a season ticket up to the season before, but it's like a seven and a half hour return journey. Yeah, it's so a it's long way. For the cost and what have you. So I'd actually, <laughs> I'd actually, my, my son was going to uni, so I thought, oh, I'm not, I can't, I'm not going to do this anymore. I got rid of his season ticket because we're on. So I take the. I take the credit for winning the league. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it was just absolutely, and it just carried on. And yeah. every week we're thinking, you know, this is going to be it. We're not going to do it. Something's going to happen. Uh, and then we went to about the last six games or so. Tottenham were always playing before us, so they just caught us up. But then we played after and went away. Mm. And we could have won it at Man United, and we didn't. And then Tottenham obviously did their famous coming third in a two horse race, lost it at Chelsea, uh, and it was just I was I I was I went on a, on, on Talk Sport that night, and I, <laughs> I, I I I am not proud of the fact that I was totally and utterly drunk when I was on the radio. I don't know what I said because I'd been on so much during the year because yeah. of the story going well. Um, and it was mad. It was, we were, I was on New Zealand radio, on, you know, <laughs> American, New York stations. And, what, and it, literally, it was, we, the rest of the podcast was ringing up going like, uh, there's a guy called Lee Jobber. You probably don't know him, but he, he does the drums, at, or he used to do the drums at Leicester. And right. uh, uh, he, he did his own podcast as well. And I remember ringing up going like, Lee, can you help me out? I've double booked myself. Can you can can you speak to Japanese radio on Thursday? <laughs> and he'd be going, yes, but uh, can you do Egyptian radio on Monday then for me? <laughs> you know, <it> was so, <laughs> we were drained at the end of that year. It was great, you know, and yeah. Channel, you know, I remember having to sort of. My boss was in a foul mood, and I had to go in and ask her if I could leave early because Channel Five wanted me on the news. I'm like, excuse me. <laughs> but, I mean, work were great. I mean, yeah. the day after we won it, and it, we, were, we were suit and tie job. We were a national newspaper. We were suit and tie, or local newspaper, sorry. 
I, I went in in my Leicester top and you know it was I'm surprised you were in paralytic trying to go in <laughs> to be honest with you that day i was still drunk from the night before not much work got done let me put it that way and if I, anybody I, I, at the I moment is still watching i apologize but, uh, but it's, 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 it's once in a lifetime isn't it sorry hmm. But it's once once in a lifetime these sort of things. The Leicester, it is definitely yeah. yes. You know, it won't happen again. And like I say, I don't think. I think we gave hope to so many clubs. Yeah, that it can be done. Yeah, but I think now the only way it's going to be done is like a Newcastle, where there's yeah. that absolutely mega rich clubs behind them. Uh, other than that, I don't think there will be um, a, a club that breaks into that like we did. If you like. yeah, I, I mean, which is, shame, which is a shame. It is. I mean, we're, we're recording today. It's the 18th of April today when we're recording. Also, I'm not 100% sure when this will go up. But I mean, we spoke on the podcast yesterday on the 17th uh, and we spoke about Brighton. Uh, are they emulating, almost emulating Leicester in the sense that trying to break trying to break that elite at the top? Yeah. And I think I think that's the best you can hope for really these days with the amount of money that is yes. in football. Yes. And I mean, we. I'm not stupid. I know when we won the league that you, you, you rely on other clubs to like, you know, if you're going to finish in the top um, in the top six, you need a club to drop out of the top six. Now, yeah. this year, that's unfortunately, sorry, it's been Liverpool and Chelsea. And well, Chelsea you know, dropping up the top 10. <laughs> well, either, well, no, no, if you leave BC, then the top 10 becomes the top 11. They did that for Liverpool. I don't know if you noticed that one week. You were eleventh, but they showed you in the top. Like it was don't the know top what you're talking about. Another clue. <laughs> yeah, but no. Anyway, um, yeah, I, I forgot what the question was. Now <laughs> uh, we, we, about about teams breaking in, about breaking yes, that yes. sort of elite spot, and someone dropping out. You do, and when we won it, you know, I mean, um, Arsenal were being Arsenal. Yeah. You know how they managed to come second. I don't know. Spurs did a Spurs as they always do. Um, Chelsea were doing their normal sacking the manager and they were down in mid-table somewhere. Um, Manchester City announced that they were sacking Pellegrini with about two months to go, so the players just gave up. Everything fell in. And yeah. What I love about this season, and we're having an absolutely awful season, but it's great that I'm looking at it and I'm seeing Brighton and Brentford and even Fulham yeah. uh, at yeah. one point up there challenging for European places. Yeah. So I'd love it to be us, but if it can't be us, I like I'm a great bit I'm a great lover of the smaller teams and I'm not being disrespectful to them and I include myself yeah. ourselves in that, but the smaller teams doing well. Yeah. That's it's what nice, it's about. Totally. Living the dream. That's what you yeah, that's what football is exactly. all about. And the thing is, and I don't, I don't begrudge investment in football and in football teams and that. I mean, but I do, I just worry a little bit that you're just you're making it too much that it's it is dependent upon reliant upon these massive figures being spent on your team. But that's yeah. why I like, and, and like you said, I mean, the Leicester story, Leicester story is it in red commas? It it did it brought a lot of hope to a lot of teams, and it did demonstrate that if the circumstances are right. And in you know respect to Leicester, you have to take advantage of that. You know mm -hmm. you could have had all this bad stuff going on, and you could have been absolutely horse crap and not picked up the results. It would have been irrelevant, you know. Who did not laugh when we signed Claudio Ranieri? Yeah, <laughs> you know. But I, I can remember uh, I was writing for the Metro at the time, and I can remember, yeah. I've still got it. Uh, I should have it up and framed actually. But I remember saying I was actually pleased that Ranieri was coming because yes, he had never won a a top league title in whichever league he played, but he always won cups and he'd got teams yeah. to like second and third. I said, if he gets me to second or third, I'll absolutely love him. You know, <laughs> but obviously he yeah. went, he went further than that. And uh, that was just, it was, yeah. Yeah. And I have yeah. the trophy there. Uh, the well, actual no. one. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, <less> <laughs> you know, I'm doing a podcast. Don't tell them. The they don't know. <laughs> no. <laughs> Uh, no, it isn't the original one, but it cost me a lot. It was, it was when I was working and I had silly money no. to spend and I thought, you know, it's never going to happen again. So yeah, yeah. I especially exactly. like having Nottingham Forest fans on and whatever you and I just <laughs> point them at that one. <laughs> But yeah, many it is. It's a, it's a, it is a wonderful story, and I think going from a wonderful story sort of slides us beautifully into this season. 
which is the polar <laughs> opposite of, of a wonderful of a wonderful story. Um, I mean that this this section is Leicester this season. And uh, I mean, it's it's, it's difficult. Hey, mate, Jeff, I, <laughs> I imagine to try and describe it using uh, language that doesn't drop into the sort of eighteen plus feet. It must be quite difficult. I mean, what what what's what's gone wrong this season? We have got very good owners, and I want to say right yeah. from the start, we are not in financial trouble any more than any other club. We had £192 million worth of debt written off by our owner by converting that into shares. So he's he's showing commitment to the club. Obviously, his late father, you know, was was the same, you know, and and, and they didn't just, I always say, they didn't just buy a club, they bought into the county. You know, the the work they do with the the money for the local hospital, they're just, just brilliant. But everything comes to an end. It's football. Like you say, it goes around in cycles. And, you know, we'd, we'd waited 10 odd years to get back into the Premier League. Then that happened. And we were chasing the dream. You know, we were doing what Leeds did when, you know, David O'Leary and, and Risdale was there. But we've been sensible and we've got owners. And as much as I've, I've complained about decisions they've made, and I'm entitled to, I'm a fan. And yeah. as much as I love them for everything they've done, it doesn't put them above criticism. Yeah, I would criticise some of the decisions they've made. Um, but we were, we were trying to get... Well, we finished fifth two seasons running. Now, under normal circumstances, you say, Leicester, wow, finishing fifth two seasons, Europa League, two seasons running. It was a dream. We'd be pinching ourselves. But obviously, expectations were higher because, you know, we'd, both both seasons we'd fallen out the top four on the last week of the season. I think the second time it was to you lot. Um, uh, we, we went for it. We went for, yeah. for the dream. And the way that Leicester work with their finances is, yes, we have got rich owners, but in relative terms, not the same as Manchester City and not the same as Newcastle now. But compare us to Rochdale, compare us to Oldham, and they'll look at us as we would look at Newcastle. So yeah. we have we had got the money to spend, but we also, part of the way that the club is run is that we have an amazing scouting system. I mean, we look at some of the players we get in and we would buy these players in and then sell them for ridiculous amounts of money. Yeah. Now, Riyad Mahrez, £425,000. <laughs> £60 million to Man City. Chilwell, coming up through the youth system, £50 million to Chelsea. You know, um, Maguire. We also have Harry Maguire. You know? uh, that, that must be the biggest giggle in the, in the world. <laughs> but you were see, people say that, and I didn't appreciate it at the time, but Harry Maguire knew that Man United wanted him. Yeah. His contract was up, so that he could well have moved and, and we would have not got a penny. And he yeah. turned around and said, Look, I, I don't, you know, you've saved my career because I was with Hull. I've got relegated. Now they've gone down again. Uh, I don't want you to lose out. So he signed a contract knowing that Man United were going to come in. And that's why we could hold out for 80 million. And as we always say, thank you, Man United, for our new training ground. <laughs> I mean, but that is, and that's that's an amazing training ground. But that season we didn't sell Tielemans. Yeah, that was our big hmm. prize player that we would have sold that season. We held on to him in the hope that we could make break into that top four. Uh, so when we because of course we got to the semi-finals of the um, Europa Conference, and I don't care what anybody says. I don't care if it's the European egg and spoon race. If it's a European competition, oh, I yeah. win it. You I'm, know? I'm 100% ask, with you. Ask Jose Mourinho what the competition means and he'll tell now, you. It's, it's only in this country that we disrespect <laughs> yes. all the other European Cups. It, no yeah. other league does. They all take it seriously. And, Arsenal you know, fans they win. Says, well, I want, we won't want to be in it anyway. It was a good job you weren't. You finished eighth, mate. You know? yeah. but, well, they couldn't win it even if they were in it, maybe. Well, that's just, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, they... they <sighs> So we were, we've sort of committed, and but with COVID and everything, our owners obviously, they, well, not obviously, they own uh, hotels and duty free shops. So obviously, yeah. with COVID, they got absolutely battered. I, I assume uh, they struggled a bit then. <laughs> yeah, 
And of course, you know, a couple of years before that, you know, Top's dad, Richard, passed away in the helicopter crash. So he'd taken a lot more on. Um, and Brendan Rogers was on about having a, a rebuild. And he thought that he would have money to go out and buy. Yeah. Uh, that money wasn't forthcoming. And this is one of the criticisms I've got of Top is that he didn't say anything until his programme notes when we played Manchester United on transfer deadline day. At the right. end of the summer. So by which time it was too late. And we'd had two months of moaning at Brendan Rodgers because we thought he wasn't spending anything. But we couldn't spend anything because of FFP. Yeah. Now we're not like Manchester City and possibly Everton if they get fined. We have, you know, we haven't got those millions to, to spend, uh, you know, to pay a fine off. You know, yeah, like I can say we're rich, but we're not we're not mega rich. And UEFA, we also got well there's ourselves, West Ham, and I think Chelsea and Man City all got warned by UEFA for yeah. uh, FFP. Yeah. And UEFA's FFP, I believe, is a lot stricter than the Premier League's yeah, I FFP. I think Arsenal were in that as well, weren't they? They were under a watch list. Right, right. But they, we, we were hoping, obviously having finished fifth twice, that we were yeah. going to get back into Europe again. Uh, we couldn't go out and buy any players because we'd got a full squad. So if yeah. we're buying players, like, say, not Forest have done, you, 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 we're going to have players there that we are paying wages for High wages for some of them are only average players because obviously we've we've won the league, so we've got to pay more money yeah. to get players in. Uh, it, it's just stupid to bring players in when you've either can't play them because you haven't got the squad numbers, or you drop somebody out of the squad, but you're still paying them, but you can't play them. It's it's financial stupidity. That's kind of you know look what happened to Leeds, and we didn't want to be a, a Leeds. Um, I mean, they, they obviously came very, very close to going out of business. And oh, you, you didn't fancy paying thousands on goldfish, did you? <laughs> no, not at all. And Terry Venables wasn't available to come to our rescue. Um, and that was the start of the problems this season. Mm. So, like I said, it wasn't financial. We did have the money because we were, you know, we were enough. Free. Then we had the foreigner saga and then wanted to leave and go yeah. on strike and not play it, paying, uh, playing, sorry. Um, then we had a really bad start to the season, and Rogers at that point should have gone. Yeah, but you know, every all the Liverpool fans were saying, I mean, you know, you know what it was like. Everyone said, "Oh, three years and he'll be done," and we said, "Oh no, give him a chance." And unfortunately, he had a good end to last season, like the semi final of the, the conference, European conference. Yeah. We finished eighth, I think. So on paper, it didn't look too bad. Yeah. The season wasn't bad, but then. So he was kept on, and uh, just before the World Cup, we had a bit of a run, and we did really well. Uh, but we were beating teams, and no disrespect to them, that we should have been beating. Yeah, you know? yeah no, I agree. We've only beaten two teams. We beat Spurs, I think you were in fifth, and Aston Villa, who were in 11th at the time. Apart from that, we've never we've not been anybody in the top 10 this season. Um, and again, that saved him his job. He should have gone then. Then he came back. And we won a couple of games. We had a we had a better January transfer window. We bought some players in because uh, we managed to sort of move a few on, and it just went downhill and downhill. And everybody around us is stacking the manager, and we're thinking, yeah. why is he keeping? Why is he keeping Rogers? Rogers, and I don't. Know, I say you you know what he was like. He's blaming everybody but himself. Yeah. You know, it was it was never his fault. Uh, he complained. Uh, on the opening day of the season, uh, we were 2 0 up against Brentford. We ended up 2 2, and apparently it was too hot for the players. But he only used oh, two of the him. five substitutions. Um, we, we'd got a very inexperienced squad just after Southampton had beaten us, having put out the youngest squad by any Premier League team since 2017. He was talking complete BS week in, week out. But Top felt a little bit guilty because he hadn't backed him in the summer. Yeah. So he kind of stuck with him. Um, Palace then got... Boy, and we all laughed. Didn't we all? We, we all laughed. If we're honest, we all laughed when they started. You know what? We, we, did, we did predict it on the pod that he was potentially going to come back. We said, why don't we take on Hodgson? 
yeah. Well, yeah, but look yeah. at it. He yeah. was literally, they're safe, they're not going to go down. And no. that was our first game. And he, his, we went to Palace. That I'm 62 and I've watched Leicester Light, I've said earlier, for many years. That 45 minutes was some of the worst football. I'd have to say it's in the top five worst 45 minutes of football I've ever seen Leicester City play. That is how bad we were. He had no answer to it at all. Um, and he had to go. Uh, unfortunately, for once, he didn't have a plan B, the owner. So we had to go a couple of games before we could get somebody in. And um, we were very lucky because, you know, Frank Lampard went to Chelsea, so we couldn't get him. Um, <laughs> yes. Benitez, I was just reading, we managed to avoid that. And we managed to avoid the obviously the, the ego that is Jesse Marsh, you know, the, the man who's the man whose ego is that big but his talent can't match up to it. It was very strange by names that you were linked to. I mean, I'll be honest, I think if you were in a different position in the league, Benitez would have been an idea. Not down him. there. I do not want him. Um, oh, he's lovely. He's got such a lovely booty. <laughs> Yeah, you can him back then. Klopp's not exactly having the best season, is he? <laughs> I mean, everybody said, like, oh, yeah, but he got Newcastle back up. Yes, but he took them down. Oh, yeah. you know, the people forget that. You know, don't look at him, like, not from his Liverpool years and, and the you know, European Cup and all that. Look at him at the Everton year. Mm. <laughs> How awful. I do not want him. And Jesse Marsh. I mean, we got to the point where we'd have anybody. I bet you're getting nervous though. Being linked, I mean, when, when I saw Jesse, I thought, oh, dear Lord. <laughs> I, I did a show and I had I had a Leeds fan on. I said, yeah. come on. And I said, I'm at the point now where I just want somebody to come in with some new ideas and just freshen it up, even if it's the tea lady. You know, somebody that's got something different to, to what Brendan's doing. Because we replaced him with our first team coach who. <laughs> He looked at it and he went, oh, I'm replacing a guy who's been sacked after four years at the club. So what I'm going to do is play exactly the same way that he was playing. And you're like, what the is going on? You know, <laughs> try something different. Uh, uh, I said, I had the, so we're just hoping to have had anybody. So I had this guy on said, look, look, I'm kind of resigned to Jesse Marsh. And he added, oh. He put, by the time that I was ready for slitting my wrist by the time they came off that show. <laughs> yeah, they weren't fans, were, are they? <laughs> no, no, not at all. And uh, I mean, he, you know, he, he wants these long contracts and what have you. And, uh, and I think we have actually stumbled, luckily more than anything, into a really good management team. Now, I know people will say, well, look at, you know, um, Dean Smith, he, you know, he got sacked at Norwich, and he, you know, was struggling at Aston Villa. Mm. Yeah, well, Stephen Gerrard didn't exactly do well at Aston Villa, did he? You know, he he got Villa up. You know, Thomas Frank is living on the success of what Dean Smith did at Brentford before he took over. Uh, he took, I don't think it was Swansea, but there was a club that he took from bottom of the league to the playoffs and got them promoted. The no, guy, yeah. <laughs> you know, well, come on, do your own work. <laughs> No, I mean, he is a good manager. And, of course, his assistant manager is Craig Shakespeare. Yeah. Who was assistant manager to Nigel Pearson and assistant manager to um, Claudio Ranieri. It's quite and well thought of as well, isn't he? He is. He is a good mm. coach. He, when we sat Claudio, he took over, kept us yeah. up that season. And, of course, he was there for the great escape. So he's been here and done it. Yeah. And then you got John Terry. Yeah, maybe we locked the door to the, uh, <laughs> the players' lounge. But look, <laughs> whatever you say about it, with John Terry, he is one of the top defenders there's ever been in the Premier League, in my opinion. And our defence needs all the help he can get. And yeah. if he can't come in and sort that defence out, then I don't know who can. So you've got three people there. And, OK, maybe we're looking at it a bit through blue tinted spectacles and we like Dean Smith because he's got Craig Shakespeare with him. But, yeah, I, I'm happy. I'm happy. And I think if we go down, we should stick with them. Yeah. And if we, if they keep us up, the argument is, well, haven't they deserved the chance to carry on sort of thing? You know, I know we're a big yeah. fan 
Potter and what have you, but he won't come to us if we go down. So, but no, I'm I'm happy with the three that are in there. And yeah, we lost to Man City at the weekend. And that first, who doesn't? <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um, I didn't really. Know. Did you know that you can make substitutes at half time? Because <laughs> Le- Leicester, we didn't know that. Because Brendan had, he, he didn't do that ever. I think once I'm, I, I know he did it. No, oh, sixty minutes. That's when he does his. Yeah. We did. We made substitutes at half time. We used five substitutes in that game. Five. I mean, what? I'm learning so much about football and the things, <laughs> you know. And he tried different things, and you could say they took the foot off the um, gas when they were three 0 up after twenty minutes. But fair play to, to them; they showed us the respect by putting out a really strong team. They needed yeah. to win because they needed to keep the pressure on Arsenal, which they are doing. And you know, they 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 came out, they did the job, and at three nil, game's over, really. But in that second half, Inacho got a goal. If Madison had crossed instead of shooting, Inacho might have got a second. And then Inacho went and hit the post. You could have been looking at completely different, you know, because he'd taken all his top players off because he got the Munich game this week. But, yeah, it, 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 the actual game, 3-0. After, 30, after 20 minutes, I thought we're looking at another 9-0, 10-0 here. You know, but... Yeah, I, 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 it was it was an improvement, and it, in yeah. a way, I said it was a free hit. I write for the BBC, and I've, I'm on the on the web page today. I've said it was a free hit for him, really, because we didn't expect to get anything. Yeah, to get, you know, though. But the next four games are, yeah. It's a critical. I mean, we, on on the podcast we did yesterday, if you look at all the bottom five clubs, five six, they're mm. all playing each other. Between yeah. now and the end of the season, everybody's playing each other, and it's it, quite literally every game is critical at this stage. Well, we, we've got Wolves, who I think possibly are safe now. Yeah. Um, then uh, away to Wolves, then we're home to Everton. Wow, yeah. <laughs> that's, a, that's a sick pointer. And then we are um, away at Leeds, I think. It is. Yeah. <laughs> and then home at Fulham. Now. Everybody said, well, these are winnable games. Well, yes, they are, but then so was Southampton at the bottom, and they've beaten yeah. us twice this season. But the interesting thing is the next game after that is Liverpool at King yeah. Power. Now, you know, last time we played you, we were very generous, and we, you know, scored both goals for you, which, you know... They were wonderful that. goals as well. I've yes. I've never seen such good goals in all my days. <laughs> they genuinely, how he did it, they were the best own goals I have ever seen. There's arguments saying like, should, was he shouted? Should he have left it? You know, Ward said he had it covered and what have you. I can't blame him for that at all because nobody deliberately goes out and scores a known goal. Yeah, that first one, his his intention was to belt it into Rose Ed. That's what FaZe does. He's not, he's a, he doesn't mess about. If he's not going to pass on, he boots it out, out of the play. I just further away. So I, that I was on like his that as well. <laughs> yeah, it's on his mind. And he obviously just caught it wrong and it spun off. He couldn't do that again <laughs> if you paid him. You know, and then the next one, it came off the post, hit him on the chin. I mean, the guy was <laughs> Took me back to Frank Sinclair when he used to be our own goal king. But, <clears throat> yeah, I mean... I, up until last night, was saying, actually, Liverpool is winnable because you have let us down so many times this season. You, you, you yeah. lost to Forest, you lost to Leeds. Bournemouth. But then again, you know, you had a you had a bit of a, a, a good game last night. Yeah, I, I, we, we, yeah, bizarre. You never know what's going to happen there. But but they are, there's some pivotal... I mean, personally, I think that Everton game... That's because that's the game that for me, I think for Everton, that's the game that can then push them into a more uh, more secure position, if you like. They, I th- they literally are six pointers. I know it's an old mm. you know saying, what have you, but you know, they are above us, two places above yeah. us, and it drags them into it. And that's yeah. what we've got to do. And they, I mean, I don't think it's going to be, I think it'll probably be about 34 points will be enough this season. Um, mm. If this was a normal season, we'd be down now. Yeah. You know, I think, but there's so many teams are just in in the mix, if you like. Um, but yeah. And then, of course, after you, we've got Newcastle, which is a bit of a given. Mm. Uh, we've got West Ham on the last day. Yeah. 
which which again, I mean, that could be it, this could very easily be a last day relegation fight. I think West Ham again. I think they're safe. They, they've won two games, albeit yeah. one nils and what have you. But they need another it, point, really, don't they? Yeah. I think. I think. I think. I think, I think they came in hand. Yes, they do. Yes, they do yeah. as well. And that's 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 pivotal for that. I think if yeah. they get something on that. I mean, still about being pivotable. Pivotable. Piv, piv, you know, pivotable. Yeah, pivotable. Um, our goal difference. I think it's something like minus twelve. Now that was the worry at three 0 down that we were going to get hammered because our goal difference. Let's just have a look here. Our goal difference is um, and then Bournemouth. I think Bournemouth and Southampton are the two of the lowest ones. I believe minus yeah. twenty eight and twenty nine. I think well, we're minus fourteen. Um, Southampton minus twenty nine. Forest minus thirty two. Um, yeah. Everton twenty two. All right, Leeds twenty. West Ham is 12, fair, fair play to him. Bournemouth is 28. That could be worth a point at the end of the season. Yeah. And the fact that we only lost, you know, it was only a two goal difference, that's the thing that we have to take from that Man City game. <laughs> because under Rodgers, that would not have happened. We would not have got that goal or even. Because we had them worried at the end, but that would not have happened under Rodgers. But that that was the saving grace for us, the fact that it was only a two-goal deficit. Yeah, and and it's like a mindset thing. So you think with Rodgers, that there was that negativity that was there. I mean... And yes, it, it, was, it was awful. I mean, you know, you say that some people say managers don't have a plan B. He didn't have a plan A. <laughs> I mean, it just totally... It, it, somebody said, one of the big journalists said... Brendan Rodgers does not have a small um, squad. He has the same size squad as everybody else. But what he does is he has a small small group of players that he trusts. Yeah, it's like They're 15, like 14, 15 players. Yeah, and he won't know if he'd had a bad game or not, he'd be playing. And his training, we got, I tend to say 70% of our injuries were actually from the training ground. Because of the way he, I I used to think I think I thought our doctor was Harold Shipman. I thought it was that and that many. <laughs> no, seriously, because it was just stupid the number of injuries that we got at that training ground. I mean, it's like like well, we we paid for this training ground. We better use it and injure some players. Yeah, Johnny Evans, he'd been out for weeks. He came on, he played five minutes, went off fine. Training the next day, he pulled a muscle. I mean, the training, even for Farner when he came, when he first joined us, said he couldn't believe how um, intense the training was. And it, it's like, he was, no, but nothing, you know, that was the annoying thing, that nobody questioned it. Hmm. But, well, but, he won in Scotland, didn't you know? Yeah, you could, he could win in Scotland. <laughs> I mean, come on. It, there's two clubs in Scotland. And one of those wasn't even in the same division for the first couple of seasons because they've been dumped four seasons because of being naughty with money. And so if he doesn't win those things, then yeah. And when when we got, first got him, I I was happy because of the Liverpool connection because he yeah. nearly got you to the uh, to the league. Yeah. Uh, it was that experience. The fact that he'd won all that in Scotland meant nothing. I'm sorry if there's any Scots fan, you know, people watching. But it's not they... me. I didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I implied. You did. You did. <laughs> you implied it was a pretty big sign you held up. <laughs> but yeah, sorry. Like I say, anybody could have sort of done that those first mm. couple of seasons. Um, he knew what he was doing when he came to us. He got out at the right time because he knew his, his three years were sort of up. But <sighs> love Brendan. Brilliant. I'm missing him. <laughs> I mean, I'm was, I mean, my my only worry, uh, really, with that lesson is it doesn't, or it hasn't looked like the players have got a lot of fight there. For example, I mean, Madison is someone people talk about as your, as your difference maker. He doesn't always look like he's up for a battle. He, he looks like he wants to just do something nice and then have a rest. I mean, as someone with a more intimate view, uh, what what do you think? It's down to Rogers. I mean, you know, they they say, don't they, that. Owners start to look like the dogs after a while. <laughs> well, the teams, the teams look and, and spoke and played like. Well, I stopped covering the press conferences because they were so boring. The guy, I'd watch these press conferences like, late last thing at night so I could get to sleep. 
he had no inspiration whatsoever. He he he. The only thing he was good at was impersonating a seal at the side of the pitch. That's all he ever did. You know, Dean Smith. He was there. He was shouting at the players and redirecting them. And he was. Oh, I'm sorry. He he just didn't change Not anything. Not a fan. Not a you fan know. then. I know, I love him for what he did, but yeah. every manager has, as every player does as well, like because Vardy's coming towards the end of his career now, every manager and player has a sell-by date, and yeah. his was well, well gone. You know, he was, if, he, if he was cheese, he'd be covered in mould. I mean, that's how bad he'd, he'd got. Um, but he couldn't, he couldn't inspire... I'm going to keep this clean now, haven't I? But he couldn't inspire anybody. Uh, I'm sorry, you know. Uh, m- motivated? No way. You know, <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, no, uh, I, I don't, no, 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 no. We have to go. <laughs> but I mean, but, but before we, we we wrap up and move on, there. I mean, your prediction. Where do you think you're going to end? Do you think this is the end of your Premier League run, or do you feel that uh, Dean Smith has got a great revival in him? We've done it before. We've done the great escape before. Um, if I was sat here with Jesse Marsh in charge or Benitez in charge, then I'd say all hope is lost. Good luck to anybody who sails in, as they say. Um, like I said earlier, we've somehow stumbled upon probably the best um, uh, group that we could have got. Um, and would he keep us up? Unfortunately, I'm not sure. I think we might just we might just fall a little bit short. That goal difference could be so important. Mm. Uh, but hopefully, as well, he's looked at that Man City game and he's gone right. Well, that didn't work, and we yeah. tried that and that didn't work. You know, Vardy up front wasn't on his own; just it doesn't work anymore. And then it's funny, Dean Smith comes back. Pick Soyuncu uh, yeah. as one of our central defenders, man of the match. And yet Rogers wouldn't have him anywhere near the, the squad at some, some weeks. Yeah. Now, what does that tell you? I just think because he used to be one of his favourite human beings, didn't he? It wouldn't seem because you weren't people, they're all human beings with Brendan Rogers. <laughs> you know what the thing with Brendan Rogers is though, and this I I I have a theory here. You'll like this. Not a lot, but you'll like this. That you do not want to play well for Brendan Rodgers, because if he comes out and praises you, you'll never play again. <laughs> when we played you, like it was last season, you just knocked us out of the um, Coca uh, Fizzy Pop Cup, whatever it is now, <laughs> Caribou Cup, on penalty. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Remember, you you were two 0 down. I think he got it to two all. It went to penalties, and you beat us. And then the week after, you came and played us at our place, I think it was, and we beat you. And we had Hamza Chowdhury as an emergency centre-back. And Hamza Chowdhury had the game of his life. Brendan Rodgers was smoking, was blowing smoke up his bottom. So, for a player, this is a fantastic player. Never played again for us. <laughs> <laughs> and and so who wants you know you don't you don't want to play well because if he comes out and praises you that's it <laughs> it's ah oh. and when you so look at it... the players that he bought on his watch Perez Bertrand Vestergaard hmm. one of our best ever managers love the guy to bits well, so if if any football club owners are looking for a new manager and you want a reference for Brendan Rodgers. <laughs> <laughs> Chris, Chris is the man to speak to, but uh, so it's so full, full of confidence, full of confidence that I'm just you being could realistic. be in trouble. You know, no, and I got there. If we go down, I mean, like I say, I'm 62 now. I've seen it all, been there, seen it, got the T-shirt. You know, we've we've got ourselves and Man City have been promoted out the second tier more times than any other team. If we go down, we've still got a football team. We've yeah, not got good them. structure. Everything's good structure and well yeah. set up at the club, isn't it? I don't think we'll do a Burnley, though, and come back up the way they have. That's amazing what they've done. I don't think we'll do that. Mm. Um, but, yeah, I, I, 
I just think this might be our season. Yeah. And then we rebuild and hopefully hopefully come again. Um and if it look, look, if it does, I'd sooner get relegated and still have a club than stay yeah. up and possibly go bust. Because we've done that a couple of times already. <laughs> Yeah, fantastic. Well, what we have then, we'll 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 move on from that section. I don't want to depress you anymore. Really? Really? I, I love yeah, talking I, about I, Brendan. Don't yeah. let's carry on a bit longer. <laughs> Yeah, I, I but uh, but what we'll do, I mean, on the on the premise that potentially there's going to be a lot of big changes at the end of the season, regardless yes. what happens, because obviously the management team, player contracts, it could it could be all change, which which brings us very nicely, and I hope you'll enjoy this. I know we as a team certainly do. Uh, our next game, which is absolutely, or well, absolutely not, the question with only two answers: absolutely or absolutely not. Absolutely. No, 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 no. Absolutely. Absolutely. Absolutely not. Absolutely not me. Absolutely. Oh, yes, absolutely. Absolutely not. So here it comes, the question with only two answers, absolutely or absolutely not. I can't help but chuckle every time I watch it. Bless your heart, Charlotte. She's brilliant. But uh, <laughs> for those that regularly watch us, know that Sam normally presents his section. So if I cock it up, I apologize in advance, but I shall give it my well, darn good night so far. Well. What could possibly go wrong? Exactly, exactly that. But as, as the as the video very helpfully implied and told you and explained, this is his only two answers, absolutely. Well, absolutely not. So we're going to present some players in the team where potentially their contracts could be coming at the end or they're linked with moves elsewhere or they're just no good or Sam's just decided these would be interesting ones to talk about. And we're going to ask you, would you keep them? Would you keep them? Absolutely or absolutely not? So there's let's no take middle a look. ground, is there? There's, there's no middle ground. And the first one is the player whose name I cannot remember how to say. I believe it's at Phase. I call him Faze. Um, Faze will do. Yeah. Is uh, it somebody you're going to keep? Absolutely. 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 Yeah. absolutely. And I, I've just realised I need to make sure I remember to take a note of what your answers are. <laughs> <laughs> but when we look at the spin the wheel afterwards, the next play, he's got Telemans. Linked with everyone at one yeah. stage, but I, I, I've not been so sure recently. Oh, God. I knew you were going to ask me this one. Um... The question is, do I keep? Do keep? Yeah, absolutely not. No, it's, absolutely it's, it's, not. It's, it's out of contract anyway, so I think I'm pretty safe on that one. <laughs> uh, so the next footballer is Jamie Vardy. Oh God, I hate you. Um, <laughs> oh, um, it's a toughie, isn't it? I love the guy to bits, and if he walked in now, I'd bend over and have his babies. But <laughs> absolutely not. I'm sorry, he's come to the end, you know, and I, I'd sooner him go and go out on it as high as possible than just drag it on and, yeah, absolutely yeah, not. Yeah, he, he's ageing now, isn't he? Bless his heart. Inevitably, it happens, apparently, to everybody, so I hear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it does, believe me. <laughs> uh, the next, James Madison. As we mentioned, you've got his, uh, his shirt in the back there. Yeah, Poten potentially your 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 game changer, but is he? But would, are you going to keep him? Um, okay, I, I, I'm answering these for the good of the club, so I'm going to say absolutely not because he is our one major sellable asset. <laughs> I but love I it. Love, I would love to keep him personally, but. As, as, as an asset for the club, which makes it, if that's a business model that you've got, that's what you need to maintain, yeah. do it, maintain. And in theory, you, you could get you could get some good dollar for him. And, and Amati. Oh, I hate you so much. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
These are I didn't pick these, these are all Sam. You can just use them on Twitter. Sam, I'm that. gonna I know where you live. I'm coming for you. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. It's not far from you either, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> on oh. oh god. Um I'm Absolutely not. No, he's got to go. I'm sorry. <laughs> Good. He, I he's done I... well, but he's got to go. He's... Do you know what? I've got a feeling. I don't think we've had this many people uh, go so far. And, I th and there's another one. I think this is the last Absolutely one. not. Move on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Best I, feel, I feel sorry for this guy because Brent is another Brendan Rogers. He's pooed on him from a very great height. And I don't blame it all, but he just does not fit into our style of play. So I say absolutely not, but he goes with my best wishes and good luck to resurrect oh, his career. That is, well, that is... That was the easiest one of them all. That That is wild. That, that is Did the I save biggest... anybody? Did I actually save uh, anybody? Please, at the start. Yeah. Right at the start. Yeah. That's, and of course, the, the next thing, now this is... We're going to decide, obviously, these players are going to go. Where are yeah. they going to go? There's only there's only one way to find out. Of course, you can't leave it up to fate. You need to spin the wheel. We need to spin the wheel. You need to no, deal and spin the wheel. Who thought you had one of those prepared? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and of course, this was completely prepared. Not a surprise to anyone at all. There's there's a number. There's some club, some uh, pod favourites in here, such as Rochdale, um, Bayer Leverkusen, and then there's just some other teams as well. So we're going to decide. The yeah. first play we looked at this Tellymans was the first one to go. Hopefully. This will work because I haven't tested it yet. <laughs> I've got absolutely no idea. But we're going to spin the wheel. Here it goes. It's spin, it's spin, it's spin, 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 spin. And Tellymans is going to... <laughs> oh, my days! He's going to Napoli! <laughs> he wishes! He's good. He's good. I was hoping he wasn't going to get Rochdale. But, um, yeah, uh, fair, fair play to the guy. So nice. He's a good player. He's a good player. Unfortunately, again, oh, don't start me on Rogers again. Well, move on. Yeah. Well, that's, I mean, uh, but this hasn't taken Napoli out, so that's a little bit of nerve. So let me just see if I can remove. There we go. I can remove that manually. Thank God. So <laughs> Telly Mendes is going to Napoli. The next play is Jamie Vardy. Where is Jamie Vardy going to end his career? Who knows? We are soon to find out. Jamie Vardy is going to be going too. <laughs> Right, they've got Eric Chupamotin. They love an old striker. Uh, Will Thomas Tuchel. Yeah, there's old and there's old. You know what I mean? <laughs> You'd put, you know, even wow. Roy Hudson Roy, uh, go together, don't they? <laughs> that, <laughs> no. That is, that is just magic. Uh, so we've taken, oh, Pat, there's an easy way oh, to win. We might get some money for him, though, if he does. <laughs> <laughs> wow, so buy it. So Teddy Mitchell Happily, Jamie Vardy to buy a Munich. They're all big teams so far. Yeah. Now is the big player, the money man, Jamie Madison. Jamie, James Madison. Jamie Madison. Jamie. Yeah, that's that because we're James, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so we're, we're the two of the big teams. Are, uh, he's going to end up somewhere ridiculous, isn't he? Where is Madison going to end up? Let's spin the wheel to make a deal. <laughs> Madison is going to be. <laughs> Rochdale! Yeah. <laughs> oh, it, it, it makes sense. Rochdale up at the moment. <laughs> it, it, it makes sense. Vardy to buy in Munich. Madison I was going to say Rochdale. Vardy to buy in Munich and uh, him to Rochdale. Obviously. Yeah, yeah, obviously, obviously think about it, isn't it, really? <laughs> exactly. Uh, um, um, Marty's the next one. Um, Marty, where is he going to go? He goes to bloody Barcelona. I'm going to... Not Milan. <laughs> Into Milan! <laughs> By the skin of his teeth, he avoided Portsmouth. <laughs> oh, I tell you what, it's, leaving Leicester might be the best thing for all of these players. Well, if we <laughs> get the, decent money off these clubs. <laughs> it, could, it could be the best. You know, I'm the last one. Uh, last but not least, Yannick Vestergaard. Where is Vestergaard going to go? Oh, please let no one Liverpool. knows. Is Liverpool on there? I have no idea. I cannot remember. <laughs> Real Madrid. 
Of course. I'm, of I'm course living in a, in a parallel universe here, aren't I? <laughs> this has never... Do you know, we've done this so many times. Though. I don't think we've had so many players go to so many big teams. <laughs> Except Maybe. Madison, who is the one yeah. guy we can make money on, and you've and taken him to the Rochdale for us. <laughs> and, and, and I mean, some of the teams that are left over are like Portsmouth, Wilwall, Lincoln. They're not all big teams in the wheel, but Leicester it's just... Big. It's a fix, I tell you. <laughs> they they just attract your your players just Seth attract. Seth Blatter said this up, didn't he? <laughs> Seth Blatter did this. That's what it is. <laughs> Well, absolutely superb. You, you you can't argue with the wheel. And that was absolutely, absolutely not. I hope you thoroughly enjoyed that. Those of you at home, <laughs> to Chris. That, that was well, absolutely... I said that. It's so weird football these days. It might just happen. Yeah, yeah you never know. You never know. Vardy to Bayern Munich wouldn't, it wouldn't blow my mind in the slightest. But... <laughs> No. <laughs> but uh, but that 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 does bring us to the end. I mean, Madison, it's... Madison to bloody Rochdale would blow me, man. <laughs> it, I think Charlotte would appreciate that. Charlotte's a massive Rochdale fan. She <laughs> she would love that. She'd be absolutely elated with that. But uh, but that that brings us to the end of the pod. I mean, and I, I it's flown by. Genuinely, I I really really appreciate you coming on, Chris. That as uh, one, one of the thank most. You for, thank you for putting me up talking so much. Ah, uh, we wouldn't would have genuinely with a really comprehensive breakdown of the season that uh, I, I thought I'd have to ask more questions to get more information, but the way you cover was absolutely fantastic, and uh, I really yeah, appreciate okay. it. I'm just, I'm just going to go now and uh, probably take an overdose. You've made me that miserable. <laughs> <laughs> But just in case you don't, on the off chance that you're still with us tomorrow <laughs> and people have watched that and think, I need more Leicester City in my life, where can yeah. they find you, Chris? Give us your handles. OK. Um, it is either Leicester Till I Die uh, on most socials, uh, YouTube and uh, Facebook. It's LTID TV, as it says just there. Absolutely sensational, and of course, as always, I have to pull up the banner for all of our uh, all all of our links because I don't know where they are. <laughs> and uh, so, if you, if you want to follow the podcast, you can find me at Absolute Ball Pod on Twitter, Absolute Football Pod on TikTok, and on Instagram, Absolute Football Podcast underscore. They should be all the same. I didn't set them all up the same because I am a buffoon. And uh, but. Thank you for watching, everybody. I hope you really enjoyed it. Uh, Chris, thank you uh, certainly as well for thank coming on. Thank you for having really me on. Hopefully thank we'll you. see you next season. God willing, we certainly will do it. Or oh, we can catch you in our lower league lowdowns and breakdown. You never know. But, uh, but thank you very much for joining us. And remember, as always, trust the process. <laughs>